Get them to open a case. Follow the formal process. Just think, you mail a postcard to a buyer, and then they come back and say they didn't receive it. You refunded them, and you can get your money back. It works. It's happened. I've done it. Now this video is all about eBay standard envelope protection. There's a protection uh, with the eBay standard envelope and I'm going to go through the details of it as we get through. But first I'm going to do a review of some of the things for eBay standard envelope. Then I'm going to get into the claim process and the form and a little tracking that I use when I refund people so when the 30 days comes up it makes it real easy for me. Now one thing you're going to hear from me throughout this is have them open a case. It makes the whole process a lot simpler and better chance of getting the claim approved. So have them open a case. That way you have a dispute, it's the formal process, and everything is tracked in there. Now all the information I'm going to tell you is right from eBay's website. None of this is made up. It's cut and paste from eBay's website. So if you go out on eBay, hit help, and type eBay standard envelope, you're going to see everything I'm going to show you, except I'm going to explain it a little bit, what I've learned from it. With eBay standard envelope, it's been around for a while now, and people are getting used to it, buyers are getting used to it, but it has still got some glitches and some pros and cons to it. But let's go through a little bit of an overview here to refresh our memories about what the details are. Maybe some of them have changed since I've done a video a year ago. But the first one is eBay Standard Envelope is a low cost way to ship small lightweight items up to 3 ounces. Anything over 3 ounces has to go first class package. This is 3 ounces, 2 ounces, 1 ounce is how they break it up. To your buyers with integrated tracking and shipping protection. That's the key. Shipping protection for this video. It's more secure than shipping with a stamp and can help improve your seller ratings. I would not be top rated seller if I didn't have eBay standard envelope. For years I had an anchor store and I shipped with a label and a stamp and I was above standard. Never was going to be able to get there. eBay standard envelope brought me there. Now some of the benefits of standard eBay standard envelope are you can save up to 70 percent of the first class package service and stuff like that uh, with the eBay standard envelope. I think it's 57 cents for uh, one ounce and I can put four postcards in there and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now there's a shipping protection plans up to $20 on single items. Now that's another threshold is $20 and below. So if you're going to sell a $30 card, one item, it will not be able to be shipped uh, eBay standard envelope. So you want to stay below 20 and below. Or up to $50 on combined orders in case of loss or damage in transit. The protection is for lost or damage. $20 for single items and $50 for the whole order is the top that they'll pay on the protection. You can also take and drop off these eBay standard envelopes at any post office location in the blue boxes or you can have them picked up in your mailbox. Now there are some rules here about eBay standard envelope and this is what's on the website. So it can do trading cards, coin and paper money, and postcards and stamps. Now with trading cards you can't have more than 15 raw cards per package per envelope. No more than two trading cards with top loaders and no graded, no slab trading cards. Coin and paper. No more than five raw coins or pieces of money. No more than three coins in plastic flips flips, or pieces of paper and protector holders. No rolls of coins. That, that wouldn't work well in an envelope. No graded coins or paper money and no bullion. For what I do, postcards and stamps. No more than ten stamps or three postcards postal history items. Now if I said in my other videos, I have, I can put up the four postcards with sleeves and one envelope. Now I haven't had a claim to say I lost, that they lost four postcards. Would they pay for the four items? Probably not. I, I haven't done that. If anybody's done that, um, but I, I will put four, whatever will fit in there for one ounce, I'll put it in an envelope. And sometimes I go two ounces. So if you put more than three items in there, you might not get uh, full refund protection for more than three items. I think that's probably what the states are. I think they need to raise that because postcards are not that heavy or money or stamps. Plate blocks, not for sure what they're talking about those that fit the eBay standard dimensions are allowed. 
not for sure what they mean by plate blocks. I probably know it by something else. Uh, no coils or sheets of stamps. No graded stamps. So that's what eBay standard envelope does right now. Now they also do the first day covers, which is a historical postal item. Those have started, I was able to use eBay standard envelope for those in the past couple months. But all this is on eBay's website. And you want to go out there and check it every so often. Now again, if anybody says they want a refund or whatever in a message, and they haven't opened a case, get them to open a case. Follow the formal process. And I'll show you one reason why. I had a guy come back and said, like 45 days ago, he ordered a postcard. He just came back this week and said, I didn't receive it. I've been waiting for it because I really wanted the card, but I noticed I didn't receive it. eBay tracking envelope, a standard envelope, says it was delivered. I have no problem refunding them and then putting a claim in because it's in the 90 days, as you'll see. But I asked them, please go ahead and open a case and I'll follow the process. Crickets. Haven't heard a word, haven't heard back from them or anything. So a lot of people, when you ask them to open a the case, they don't want that. They don't want that mark on their record. They don't want to do go through the hassle or they don't know how. It's pretty simple to do. So always ask people to open a case. eBay standard envelope protection. That's what they call it, shipping protection. And we're going to go through this. Although, here's the shipping protection right here. Although you're responsible for getting the order to the buyer in good shape, each eBay standard envelope shipment includes a $20 shipping protection plan on a single order and up to $50 on combined orders to help in case of lost or damage. So the keywords there are $20 single items, $50 or order, lost or damaged items. Now the shipping protection also includes this. If your buyer claims they have not received the item, we suggest working with them to resolve the issue and then raise a claim with the included shipping protection to cover your loss. I don't get a lot of this. I don't do a lot of claims on there. I've done some, and I'll show you how I track them so I get my money back. And so far, everyone's been approved because I made them open, had them open a case, and I resolved the issue and refunded the buyer, and then I got my money back. So if the buyer claims they had not received it, they suggest working with the buyer to get them refunded, refund through the process. Now, how do you do this? So if you go into eBay and you go to help and you type in eBay standard envelope, you're going to come up with a nice little section that's very well put out. And down at the bottom on the left side, it's going to say filing a claim or claims. And when you click on that, you're going to get this here. And I'll put it on the big screen. This just explains what you need to do. Uh, if you believe an envelope was lost in shipping, you need to wait 30 days. You can't do it right away, you gotta wait 30 days. And I'll show you on my spreadsheet, my little example of how I track it, to know when I can put this in. Claims must be filed no later than 90 days. So you have to wait 30 days, and you can't be over 90 days. From the date the shipping label was created. So the date of the shipping label created. So you can go into your shipping labels, find the label, and you can see the date that it was created. That's pretty important, those dates there. You can reduce the amount of claim the shipment was only partially lost or damaged. However, the claim amount cannot be more than the item thing. So if you said that gave the buyer 50% back because it creased the corner, you can put a claim in for that because they're going to see it if you did that on the, on the case. Most of the time, I just refund full. I don't do the partials. Now, to file a claim, Select the button below and add the following information. I can go through here with all this stuff, but it's also in the form that I'm going to show you, show you now. But if you click this button, file a claim, it's going to go to this form that pops up. Now, the interesting part of this is where this form goes when you hit file the claim. I do not believe it goes to eBay. It goes to a third-party company. Because the last claim, the claims I do when I do this, I get an email back saying thank you for the claim and some information and wait a certain amount of days to get it back. But also when they responded to me and said they needed more information, it came in through my email. It didn't come in through eBay messages. So these people are probably not eBay people. It's a third party company offering this insurance protection. So be careful with them. Be courteous. They don't have access to your information like eBay would. So they're going to ask you for some stuff. Now, if they ask you for a screen print and you don't know how to do that, that's not their problem. You need to understand, Google it, screen print, very easy uh, to do. If you don't know how to put it in a PDF, they request whatever. That's really not their problem. That's, they're just requesting the information. 
And some people are technically challenged, I understand that. But you just got to remember, they, they're, they're following a the script. Now here's the form. So you go through and you put your, your eBay ID on the first line. And then you put your PayPal address. They use PayPal. I still have a PayPal uh, ID, so I put that in there. And then they ask you to put it in again to make sure. And then the tracking number. This is the ESU number from eBay Standard Envelope that you'll find on the order. And then it was the, the claim type, lost or damaged. How did, why did you refund the buyer? What did the buyer say? If it's damaged or lost? Most, all of mine have been lost in the mail. They just lost, you know, even if they were delivered, I still refund them because I knew I would get my money back if the customer says they didn't receive it with this protection. So it, I put lost. And then you go down and now you got to track the recipient's first and last name in these two boxes. Not your name, the first and two. And then you get into two pieces of information that you go into your account for. The first one, they ask for order details for this sale. If you go to your seller's hub, orders, paid and shipped or whatever, and find this order, it, on the drop down it should say order details. They want a screenshot of that there. So you want to save that to your computer and upload it here. What I found out that works well is the order detail, make sure you have the order number, the person's name, and the item number. Basically the order number and the item number are attached in that screenshot so they can match that up. It seems like they have a script or something that they need that for. But that's the first piece of information. Then the next one is upload a copy of the buyer's message about the damaged package. You can get, you can find messages in message in eBay messaging what I usually do, since I open a case, I put all messages in there and I do a screen print of that and the customer replies to that case and everything's in one spot. So those are the two pieces of information. What's neat, one thing about it is you have to do this in 90 days so that information is still in eBay. And you can't do it for over 30, until 30 days. So you got to have some way to track this. I'm going to show you. But again, have them open a case. Any refunds, you want to formally document and follow the process. Now on the top right of the form, you want to put your name. So I put Mark in my last name. That's it, right up there. Now they also have a little note here. If you put, try to put fraudulent claims in or make, that will make the shipper or co-signing liable for prosecution, all that legal stuff. There's actual human behind us processing these claims. And then when you're all done, verify your information one, one more time and click file file the claim and it goes off and then you get an email and then you wait. The messages came in my email address not through eBay Messenger. I'm going to show you how I track it in a minute when I refund somebody so I know when to put the claim in and always try to use dispute messages. Put all your messages about refund and disputes. That's just me. Now after you send that and everything they have a little note in here in eBay too to check the status of your claim. You can contact PIP Partial Insurance Plan. I think that's the protection plan, PIP, at here's a phone number, an actual phone number, and an email address, or you can chat with them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit the button and then hit them up in two minutes. I'd give it a week or so to see. I, expect this, I expected this not to be a fast process, but I'm going to tell you, it's probably not the norm, but just the other day, I had about four or five or three claims to put in, and I went through and did them. I had my money back in less than 24 hours in my PayPal because I followed what I'm doing here. Had a, had a case, it said, customer said in there it wasn't there, I filled all the stuff right. They did ask, one of them I think I messed up and they asked for a different form, so I was able to do that. They were very nice. I just did it through email. So you want to respond to them as well in less than 24 hours. That's not bad. I don't think it's the norm. Don't expect that. But I was pretty happy. So in my PayPal right now, I have my money that I refunded the customer. And, and even though it said delivered, I refunded them and I was able to get my money back. So just think, why not use eBay standard envelope? Would you get that if you put it on first class? If you sent a first class package and it didn't show up, there's no insurance. You got to deal with the post office. So that's how you contact the PIP plan. But make sure you have information when you contact them. They're, they don't have info. I don't think they have access to eBay, so they're not going to know anything about that. They're just going to know what you sent them. Okay, now we're going to get into the tracking of how I track this and make it simple for me. You can use whatever you want on here. This is just how I do it. You can do it on paper. I do it in Excel on a spreadsheet and it's part of my daily routine here. Anytime I refund a customer, I go in and fill this information out. 
Now I don't grab all the files and stuff because they're, they're going to be there when I go to file the claim. But the first column is status. You can put whatever you want, it makes sense to you. Not sent means I haven't filed a claim yet, I'm probably waiting on the 30 days. Approved means, hey, I got my money back. I filed it, everything's good, that one's done. The next, and sent is, I sent the claim in, I'm just waiting for them to review it and let me know of the status. And not approved is one that didn't make it through the claim process. Either I didn't send enough information, didn't meet the criteria. You can, you can probably appeal it by calling them or whatever, but I, I've never had to do that. Remember, this is all fake information here. Refunded, I always put yes here, because I'm not going to put a claim in unless I refunded them. The amount. I always want to know how much I refunded people. Just here, there's six of these fake accounts here, claims, that's $30. Now, just think during the holidays, the post office gets real screwed up, and your envelopes just go off in a hop or something for six months. People are going to be asking for refunds. It can add up quickly. Over a year's time, if you just did $10 a month, that's $100, over $100. So you want to have some kind of method to track this stuff, because you got to wait 30 days, and you can't be over 90 days from when the shipping label was created. Filed is when the refund, when the request, the dispute was filed, is what I put there. So I can go find it a little easier. I don't have a lot of them, so it doesn't really matter, but I, I do put it in there. And the date for the shipping label. That's the date of the shipping label. Now, on the 30 days, I add three days just to make sure I'm covered over 30 days. So it's the date, the sh which is the shipping label created. Uh, 30 days is really 33 days, and then 90 days. So I, there's my threshold right there. So I can't put the claim in until 30 days, and I'm pretty good with the days. I've got a plus three there. And then the 90 tells me, hey, if I haven't done it yet, this one's going to stay out. I can't do it, per their terms. So that's how I... It's just a little formula in there. Basically, it's uh, column date plus 33 for 30 days, and the column date plus 90 for 90 days. Very simple thing to do. Nothing amazing. Then I take the ESU number right off the order. I put that in here. I've noticed they talk back and forth in emails with order number and ESU number a lot. So you want to have those two numbers somewhere that you can match up to what you need. Then they want the item number. They want to on the screens and stuff, they want to make sure you got the item number and the order number together so they can kind of review it. I think they have a script or something. What type of claim did I put in? Lost or damaged? The buyer's ID. So this is the buyer's ID. So you can find it or whatever. And then the first and last name, you'll need that for the form when the 30 days comes up to put the claim in. You're going to need that information. And then the order number. So you can search for it too. So everything I need to fill a claim out is right here. So when I refund someone, I go in and fill this information out while I got it up on the screen. Pretty simple. Just do it on what, however you want to do it or if you, if you don't want to do it. But this makes it simple for me that I can review this once a week and I see which ones I got to put out. Now, everything I showed you here can be found on eBay. Everything's straight from eBay. It's up to tracking form. Everything else is out there and you want to check it every so often because they can make changes to it. But remember, these people that work for this PIP protection plan are not in your eBay system. They don't know eBay. So when you send stuff to them, they request stuff. Get clarification, but be courteous. Use these types of things that eBay gives us. These, this is above and beyond. This is total umbrella for eBay standard envelope. They know there's issues with tracking sometimes with this stuff. So they're, they're throwing a carrot out here. So use it. If we don't use it, they might not think it's worthwhile and take it away. So they want you to use this type of plan. They're offering something here. If you mail a postcard to a customer and they come back and say they didn't receive it and you refunded the customer, you can get your money back. Don't argue with the customer because you know you have this here. But remember, these people are not in your eBay. It comes through PayPal. I'm not for sure if you don't have PayPal what you can do. I have PayPal, so I didn't really do with that. But that's everything about protection. And I've talked to a lot of people and I didn't even know that was here. They overlooked it. Some people do use it. Some people uh, probably have some things to add in comments here that I maybe didn't go over or had an opportunity to experience. But I thought I'd give you a good overview on that. Now you also want to check my videos I put out once a month on the eBay standard analysis, on the scans. How well are they doing? I also do this for Etsy. Now this is for eBay, but my analysis video here is for how are they doing with scans? Thanks for watching. Good luck out there, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.